What's going on guys? Welcome to episode 18 of Wrecked by Freebuild. I am Chase on Two Wheels. The guy over in the corner, that dude, is Brian the Brain. And the guy floating the camera around is Luke. And this is the Wrecked by Freebuild show here on YouTube. Where Yay! we take... Yay! Woo! Yeah. We got a wheel. Yep, still, yep. <laughs> so we installed a peanut gallery on the uh, corner of the garage. This is the show where we take wrecked motorcycles, we turn them into dream bikes, and then we give them away to our lovely community over on Patreon that allows us to do this whole show. If you guys don't know what any of that is, I'm not going to continue to talk about it because you can click the top link down below and go check all that stuff out. We're on episode 18 of this bobber, and we all realize that it does not resemble what some people would describe as a dream bike yet. But we are going to get closer at the end of this episode. So today's goals, we're going to make a pulley guard. We're going to cut these things off. We're going to... These things. What are these things? The tabs on the swing arm that are used to mount the pulley guard, the old one that was belt, a belt, piece of... Sh belt guard. Belt guard. God. So, we're also going to cut metal pieces off the, the front forks. And we got a cool thing to show you on the brake side. Words. Words <laughs> and stuff. First off, last episode we left people on a, we're gonna go to a machine shop and do lots of stuff. Okay, so, so should we start there? I am, yes. I wanna show these people what, we need to show them what. Where we started and where yeah, we ended like, up, we could do we, that. We left last episode with like, we can't weld this, so. And we can explain now why we couldn't weld it. So this is where we were last week. We uh, we made ourselves this little spacer piece. And what we were trying to do is, this is the pin that is going to attach our foot brake pedal to the rear brake master cylinder down here. So we can see, can you see that in there? So this pin fits inside of here. And we were gonna attach our spacer like so, but we found out after trying to weld on this that uh, we don't have a welder that's nearly good enough to uh, get these two things to come together. Uh, so what we did was uh, we found a very local machine shop uh, not far from uh, where the garage is at right now. So we went to the machine shop and we brought them this little thing here, just like this, these two pieces, and uh, asked them to make us a rod that resembles this and uh, we also asked them if they could, if they were gonna make it, to take this side of it and make it a little bit bigger so we have more surface area. So when we bolt it on, it's got a little bit more, uh, it's a little bit more steady. And what they wound up making for us is this absolutely lovely piece of steel right here, tapered down for our pin, hole drilled in it for our cotter pin, and then this piece threaded to fit into our foot peg here. So we're just going to uh, slide the pin in. That run, fits literally perfectly. <laughs> run, a, run a bolt down into it and tighten that off and put our cotter pin in and our brake assembly will be complete. God, having that made and out of a single part is nuts. Now we have a good working rear brake, master cylinder, and plunger. That now allows us to use the adjuster that's down here that we uh, modified last week, and we could actually change the pitch of the brake lever to a, nice. a usable position for uh, our seating position. So this is our pin for this side. We already made our own pin for the other side, and we got a new piece of hardware for that as well. Well, 
Wait, how are we gonna get that piece powder coated that has with the Heim joint? We'll have to paint that one. What's a Heim joint, Chase? A Heim joint is like a ball and socket, except it has a different name. <laughs> What's a Heim joint, Brian? It's actually quite close to what Chase said. It's a enclosed ball with a hole in it so you could actually bolt through it and have a pivot. This one happens to be a rivet instead of a bolt, but it moves pretty much in every direction. Okay, shifter works, brake pedal works. So we can go and we can stop. We can go, we can stop, we can change gears. So we have that's completed. We just needed that last couple of seconds and that last part from last week to finish that off. Right. Uh, we also messed with the headlights. I forgot to say that in the beginning. We got the, you brought the spacers that we get to. I did. I uh, actually found some spacers um, and they are <coughs> a very dense plastic. So. Man, we can make stuff like this if we had a 3D printer. <laughs> um, so. There are still four more of these bolts for the headlights, correct? Yeah, Brian, I got your bolts. So what's the best way to cut plastic without effing the S up? We have a couple of choices. I'm making a family show, guys. So you wrapped it in tape. So I can mark it and see my mark. I did mention that these are plax plastic. Black stick, yeah. Black stick. And now you're gonna try to hammer that razor blade through or are you just gonna like push it, please? Will you, um... Can you not wear gloves? So you're just rolling the blade into the plastic? Yes, just a little bit of pressure as I roll it. And you're not worried about cutting a giant gash in your... Obviously not. All right, let me try that. Grabs gloves. I'm gonna tell you right now, if you put gloves on, you're probably more likely to cut through your gloves and into your finger than if you did it without them because you need the dexterity to do that. I did a thing and I didn't cut myself, I don't think. Okay, that's two spacers. Sweet! Look at that, success. It's been nasty. I'll Can try. I just go ahead and make an announcement that like, if all the lights go out, which is not gonna be the first time that's ever happened here, but like, if that happens, it's like hella bad weather today. So, it ain't our fault, is all I'm saying. It's not, I'm just, I don't want, I'm not taking the blame for this. It is. brackets at the top actually fit though. Up here? No, these guys. Because huh. if they're too far apart, then... Well, they're slotted just a bit. Oh, is that why they're slotted? Yeah. So like, so you have a little bit, of, okay. little bit of play in things. From here, this headlight looks amazing. <clears throat> I agree. I think, and this looks amazing, and all of this is silver. So imagine all that shit black. Mm -hmm. Oh wait, we weren't supposed to say anything. 
I guess it doesn't really, that doesn't really, it doesn't really matter. Oh, the framing of it is beautiful. I realized that it's a conversation piece, that it's a bobber without a front circular dome, dome light, but we ain't trying to make bikes that already been made. That's what a bobber's all about, is making something unique and custom and different. Right. Wait, what are you doing now? Mind business. <clears throat> I think he's lining up that foot peg with the other foot peg, so it's because in the last episode, I said that he, he's anally retentive and like wants to be symmetrical. And they weren't, but I think they now are. Let's go check. <clears throat> so if you guys see here, obviously Brian has symmetrically lined up the foot pegs. <laughs> Trying not to disturb the lion in his natural that is habitat. So Our fucking symmetrical. Our conclusion was correct. Are you looking at it now, <laughs> noticing that they're perfectly lined up? Yes. Okay, I feel better now. There was a whole lot of play in this. Uh huh and it's due to that adjustment collar. Right. So I just loosened it, slid it over so it was tighter up against this. That's what you've been doing this entire time? Yeah. You weren't making them symmetrical? No. We're gonna just cut back to you making them symmetrical. We'll cut this part out. All right, we got controls. <laughs> Headlights are on. All right. So For all you people out there in Wreck Bike Rebuild Land that don't like the headlights, tough shit. Wreck Bike I Rebuild Land, that's awesome. Because <laughs> I think they look amazing. I'm super happy with the headlights. Our futuristic cool headlights, done. Our brake, our brake thing is done. You all right? Yeah, it just made a weird noise and it freaked me out. And I, I already broke that side once, so like, I'm kinda- You ain't, you ain't breaking that one. Shit, what? I mean, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you ain't breaking, that's a solid one, solid piece of steel. True, yeah. You ain't breaking that one. We were talking about not cutting these little tabs off until we took the whole bike apart, but, we have the wheel out because uh, this is probably something that we should talk about. Right, we have um, not talked about that. We removed the rear wheel so we can remove the pulley so we could have some shims made. So the machinist needed the bolt pattern and the inside and outside diameter of where the shims needed to be. So the easiest way, instead of trying to measure it ourselves and trying to translate those measurements over to the machine shop, we just pulled the rear wheel off pulled the pulley off and brought the pulley over to the machinist so he can make all the measurements that he needs to make sure that everything is the correct size. So Brian, just for the people that don't know, um, what is a shim? Uh, it's exactly what it says it is. It's really just to take up very small amounts of space so we can center the pulley and the belt once we have the wheel centered, because okay. this is all aftermarket, so things need to be moved around a little bit until we get them where we really need them to be. Okay. Uh, and a shim will allow us to, it's kind of like a washer. I was gonna ask, what's but the it's, difference it's in a more, shim and a washer? Um, it's more precise. These, so, are, these are washers, okay? They come in a very exact inside diameter to go over bolts and screws. Um, and then a shim is going to be if this piece was just a slice, a couple millimeters thick, um, that would be a shim. So this is a spacer. It's one large piece all done. Uh -huh. A shim would be an exact replica of this, but really thin, so you can stick it behind it. Okay. Not big enough, stick another one behind it. Not big enough, stick another one behind it. So, so a shim, shim is out. to increase the distance on a rod type thing, and then a washer is there to like disperse strength. Yes. Okay, gotcha. That's a good way of thinking about it. All right, so now we understand what shims and washers are. Something we've had to overcome in this build is that we don't have, we, we're having a problem like ordering parts because like we're building something out of a bike that doesn't typically get made into this. Correct. And the, what else did we get from the machine shop? Because now that we have this machine shop, we're getting all this stuff that we, did. we had an issue so with. So we mentioned getting. that we pulled the rear wheel off to have some spacers, to have some shims made. Uh, we also had a couple of rear wheel spacers made. This just rolled into frame. And uh, these are the spacers that we have. Obviously, they're not going to stay this long, but we had them made extra long so we can cut them down to the size that we actually need. And uh, we'll be able to cut multiple spacers out of these because I do believe we're going to have to have a spacer in between the wheel and the brake caliper mount. Oh, and so. And then outside of the brake okay. caliper mount to the swing arm. So when we went and picked these up earlier, I was like, I don't understand where that's gonna fit. At first I thought this was gonna fit inside the wheel. So this 
goes right there. So we're just gonna cut these to the length we yep, need, we them. need them. So they're gonna be like really thick shims. Now these are spacers. This thing is so close that right. when we grease this, it's just gonna and we put this out. in, it's going to leave a ball of grease right around this top edge. So do you I'll, even grease it? Yes, absolutely. Just so whatever does get Keep through. Keep it from corroding. Okay. Let's cut the tabs off while we have the wheel off. Sure. And then, uh, and then we'll get the wheel mounted up and we'll, we'll start that whole process. So we're only removing these tabs because we... Don't need them. We don't need them and we're going to be making, in this episode actually, a pulley guard for the front. And we want minimal things on this bike. Are we sure. taking a swing on it off to do that? I think we'll just cut it right here. Okay guys, on a second thought, uh, we thought it was only these two we had to cut, but Luke reminded us that there's these little tabs up here at the end that we need to cut as well. So we're gonna wait and take the swing arm off. So what we're gonna do is mount the rear wheel and start messing around with spacers. And, yep, um, that's the plan. Like that. Question for you. What's the most efficient way to cut the spacers? Probably our chop saw. That thing? Yes. Chase is all ready to cut, and we don't know how big anything is going to be. You already got your mask on, you're ready to cut, and we don't know how, how big anything is going to be yet. We still have plenty of time to try and figure out where we're going to cut stuff. No, don't throw that one. Don't. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Oh, no. I'm just getting the area set up. Obviously. You're gonna want to take that mask off. It's gonna be a hot minute. So we, gotta put this, we gotta put this in there. We gotta do a bunch of measurements and. I'm just. I was trying to be safe. Here. You guys happy now? My pink mask is off. Step one: get the wheel in here, and then what? Measure. You might have to give me a hand with this loop because you've done this a few times. Mm. So you just need to rotate the wheel a little bit and then slide it in. This is going to be quite difficult, I think. Because it's going to be like impossible to measure behind this. We get this side right. Then we can measure from this spacer to the non spacer over here. You know, the, that inside. And then we subtract the difference between that to that when the wheel's out. So, like, this is the side we do first and put in. And then we measure the overall. Because, like you said, there's no way you can measure on the inside of that. Right. Okay, so um, let's get this distance here and here. This is center. This is not center. Is this center? That looks centered. Look centered from here. So we gotta do like connect the dots of centering, right? Yeah, sort of. I think we're just gonna go straight from steering head. Let's put it right on that backbone of the frame, right in line, right there. Closer to you. A little tiny bit more, right there. We probably should have put this spacer in first. For this side? Yeah. Just to give us something to measure, because it'll be in the hole and fill the hole. Loosen that side up, I'll pop it up. Yeah. <laughs> you have that measurement? No, we can. Grab that measurement right now while we're here and then pull that back out and 
measure this and then add what we measure to that spacer and that'll be our, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. Are you lost yet, Chase? Dude, I've been lost for like 10 minutes. Do we now. need to go back and explain what we got going on here? Okay. Right. So you and Luke just did a lot of stuff, Brian. What's, uh... So I'm gonna go back and explain what it was that we're trying to do. If you wanna come over here and take a look. Because our wheel is a different width from the factory wheel that we removed, um, we need to get the wheel centered on the bike. Mm -hmm. We also need to get the rotor centered within the rear brake caliper. So uh, what we did is we have the wheel set up so that the rear brake rotor is where it needs to be okay. within the caliper. And then we took our center line, that's what this piece of tape is, is our center line from the steering head straight down the backbone of the bike off to the rear wheel so everything is in line front to back. Right. And we were trying to get this wheel as centered as we can. All right, so we're really centered. We're probably only off by one or two millimeters, which is acceptable. So where we're at now is right in here, we put the factory wheel spacer in. So this wheel spacer fits into the dust seal that's here and presses up against the bearing. So that spacer has a definite size. All right. We can measure that. Gotcha. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure this gap now. The gap. So we're gonna measure the gap with that caliper that I just pulled out. We are at seven millimeters. All right, so now we have the measurement for that gap. Right. Now we're gonna take the axle back out, remove the spacer. Okay. Measure the length of the spacer and then add seven millimeters to that number. And that's what we and cut. And then we're going to cut a new spacer, the total width of this spacer plus the gap. Gotcha. And that'll get us our spacer for this side. That'll then allow us to work on the other side because we know this side is set. Holy now the other side is going to be a little bit trickier because the spacer actually goes in between the wheel and the brake stay. It's in behind this piece, up against the, just like this side, up against the bearing and right. in the dust seal. So we can't measure in that space. So how do you do that? Unfortunately, we're gonna have to figure that out after we get this one done. I just wanna finish one thought process before we work on something else that is uh, right. mentally a little bit difficult here. Okay, so whatever this is, plus seven millimeter. 13 millimeters, so 20 millimeters is what we need. Where's safety shield at, Chase? You're on the camera, dude. You have to know where everything's at. I do know where it's at. Oh, he's pointing at it with the camera. Do you see the power the camera has now? It is very powerful. <laughs> on the present, dude. <laughs> Holy shit. Don't touch it. No, but what is on the inside of it? Just a real thin piece of metal. You just ream that out real, that's real hot. Through the welding gloves, that's hot. Okay, here's our spacer. Can you believe that's all that we needed? Can you see the height difference? Seven millimeters causes this much work. Yeah, well, changing wheels causes this much work. Well, our issue is, is that we need a spacer on both sides of the rear brake stay. I understand that, but we can take out for, what is it, one mil maybe? Let me take a look. Honestly, it would probably be the lip of that. That's gonna be tough for me. With magic. Yeah, that's gonna be tough for me. Yeah, use magic, dude. So you're trying to fill in this gap? And then there's another, see like, uh, this will still go in further, I do believe. There's a gap, basically there's a gap between the rotor and the axle spacer, like on the other side. Mm -hmm. And then the rotor 
I mean, the, um... Can you give me a 12 millimeter socket and ratchet, please? So what I did was I took the brake stay. After I pulled the pads out, I have a little bit more play with the stay. Well, that's all we're all about here. <laughs> so I was able to take the stay and push it all the way in up against the spacer and then measure our total width. This was our gap. So we were at five millimeter total gap minus three millimeters. Now we're we're going to need to add three millimeters to the spacer that's already in there. So that other spacer plus three millimeters. And this is the size of the other spacer. So we need a 15 millimeter long spacer to go inside and then this three millimeter spacer to go on the outside. Yeah, I'm not worried about the 15 because obviously like you just proved that you can cut a big piece, but I- Getting this part cut off is not gonna be fun. You have to cut it off of this. I mean, we have it already. I think you just slap that device and you cut off the All right, I'm satisfied with that. Now we're cutting the other spacer. How long is that gonna be? 15 millimeters. What is that? Because that's the number we got for measuring. <laughs> is that the answer you're looking for? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> So that's the 15 mil? Yep. Yep, that looks about right. <laughs> Perfect. All right, so I imagine we're gonna have to take the wheel out to put the spacer in. We're gonna wait for this to cool so it doesn't burn the seal. And Good then idea. we're gonna leave the wheel right where it's at. We're gonna slide the spacer in and then we're gonna put the brake uh, stay back on and then we're gonna slide our last spacer in there and then we're gonna tighten everything up and make sure that it stays. Make sure everything looks good. So fingers crossed. Yeah, this could be everything we need to center the wheel. This ended up being a fickle bitch. Always is when you change wheels, when they're not stock size, it's kind of, if you don't have like a wheel kit that you've purchased from somebody where they've already done all this stuff, when you buy a wheel kit, you're not just paying for the wheels, you're paying for somebody to have done all this work already. That's why wheel kits are so much money. Are you gonna sleep? Yeah, help you. Are you sleeping or... while you're putting this together, sir? Okay, uh, lower the jack, please. That looks fantastic. Let's see what fantastic looks like. We'll go back over there and slide the axle in and then we'll look at it once it's all together. Oh yeah, we there, buddy. That's it? That's it. Nice job, man. That was a... That was a pain in the... High yes. five to Luke as well. All that work, all this metal, just so. We could put the wheel, bike, the wheel in the center of the bike, yes. That's nuts, man. Uh, what we did on this side is we cut the spacer down here to fit our gap in between the wheel bearing and the uh, side of the swing arm. And then on this side, we did a two piece. We did this washer in here, spacer in here, and then there is another spacer in between the brake stay and the wheel bearing going inward. So uh, we've got everything in here tight. The wheel turns nicely. The rotor is in the center of the caliper back here, so we'll have a nice even brake pad wear. I think from there we're pretty set. From here we need to, I think maybe recenter these chains on the tire. And then we need to mark and fit our rear fender. Are we gonna put the fender on here and use the fender position to figure out where we put the fender bracket? Is that the mentality? Yes. Sounds like we need a fender, boys. Now here's also the hard part. 
right? So we have the wheel centered. Right. Um, but what we don't have is we don't have the pulley on to know where the wheel is going to sit front to back. But would, won't that not matter where the, oh, because of how far the fender bracket can be out. Correct. We can get it close, but we really can't mount it until we have the pulley back. I mean, in that case, like if we're, if we can't really get it going, then there's like no point in putting it on. Right? Correct, because we may damage it more than anything else. Yes, our issue currently is that uh, we know the center line left to right, but we don't know the center line front to back. So and why that matters is because the fender is going to be hard mounted right. to the swing arm. Yes. So the distance between the fender and the tire will not, we can't, we can't move the fender closer or further away from the tire. Right. So if we need to adjust the belt, depending on where the belt is going to be on the machine, is where the center line of the wheel is going to be front to back. And we kind of need that to make sure that we leave enough room in between the fender right. and the tire, but just enough room. Because a belt doesn't wear as much as a chain does. Correct. Okay. And even if you had a chain, and same thing with this, even if we have a belt, we can take this thing and um, set the belt tension really tight. Right. And then put our fender in there. And it'll never get and closer. And it'll never get any closer than that. Right. Correct. Okay. The only way that would change is if you replaced your belt. Right. And then that might be a small issue. So we have one axis, basically. We have this axis. We but need, we need we, the other Okay. One. Cool. <clears throat> so and I think we're going to, because we're getting our pulley spacers, our pulley shims. Next episode. Um, Friday. And that's when we're filming next time. For yeah. our next episode. So uh, we can finish knocking that out then. Mm -hmm. And uh, we can move on to something else right now. Okay, so let's try to get the mock-up made for that guy. Okay. And then we'll cut it next time, and then we'll cut, like, cut the final guy. On the last episode, we talked about uh, getting paper to use as, because you made a cardboard mock-up. It was, it was a little tough to make it out of that cardboard because it was corrugated. So we went to... Michael's of all places to get poster board. I'm gonna go with green so we can see it better. This. if that's perfect or not, but we need to put it all back together now. All right, so now we see where we want this and then we can modify the shape of this, right? Yeah. Trim this so it's perfectly around the pulley. And then, you know, kind of eyeball what else, how much extra material we want. Right. And make another one, and then make another one, and make another one, and make another one, and make another one. And so it's we're going to take this piece of paper and make another piece of paper from that. And then make another piece okay. of paper, and then make it until it's absolutely perfect in paper, and then we'll transfer it to metal. All right, guys. Uh, so thanks for getting to the end of Wrecked Bike Rebuild, episode 18 of season three. Brian's got to run out here, so we've got to go ahead and end the episode. In the next episode... Sounds like we're going to be making, have a big paper project going on next episode. We'll also get the mender. The mender mounted. The mender founted. Mender founted. And uh, we'll see how else we can, how I give up. Words. Stuff. Elude you. Elude. All right, so on our next episode, we will have the pulley back. We'll have our pulley shims back so we can set the rear axle to where it needs to be so we can mount our rear fender. We'll have spend a little bit more time making our template for our belt guard. And then we will spend some time cutting the front fender mounts off of our four clicks. Oh yeah, we still have to do the seat pan too. Uh, once we get this measured up, we're gonna have to put that on when the swing arm's off anyway. Oh, okay. So what are we gonna do, like tack it on? So we'll have to grind this clean so it's just clean metal. Right. And then uh, we'll probably get everything lined up and just mark it 
and then pull it out and attach to it and tack it in place and then go back through and finish weld it. So we're like one episode away from tearing this whole piece uh, into pieces. Piece into pieces. Piece into pieces. Piece Piece into more pieces than it already is. So yeah, guys, that's what we got going on. Next, we are in the final stages of this bobber before we send all the stuff out to powder coat. Uh, if you got to this point in the video, make sure to hit the like button. Always helps us out here. And if you guys are interested in the bobber or how we run this whole thing in our Patreon page, go check out patreon.com slash chase on two wheels. You can see all the wreck bike rebuild stuff and how we are able to run the show. Outro crew, uh, thank you for getting to the end of the video. Give us a high five in the comments. That's what you can do. And uh, we will see you guys what seems like next week for another episode of Wreck Bike Rebuild. Later. Man, I got done, qu- like my brain just went to zero. Need more protein. protein. Man, f- all this protein. Dude, protein eating. is for the brain. Know. Leave a comment saying Chase should eat more protein so we can actually think. Man, I had a whole chicken breast for dinner last night. And then how much protein did you have after that? How, how many hours ago was dinner? Uh, 14, 18, 20? 20 hours ago, your body probably lived off of that protein for about four or five hours. All right, so look, I'm going to start... Your brain beating itself. <laughs> look it up, dude. I'm telling you. Okay, next episode, we'll test this. Next episode, I will eat something with protein before the episode. and we'll, Have a couple scrambled eggs or something. And we'll take a, we'll, we'll see how the episode goes. Yeah. I will give you guys right, that. Instant breakfast. It's like 18 grams of protein. I will give you guys thing. that. All right, then I'll have my protein. All right.